Hi there, and welcome back. Today, we're going to be painting up a Terranid Tyrannocyte, and we're going to be doing it in the High Fleet Typhon colour scheme. But before that, I just want to give a big shout out and a huge thank you to everyone who has subscribed to my channel over the past couple of months. I know I still have a long way to go, but all of your support and feedback has been greatly appreciated. I've also just purchased myself a Forge World Tyranid Haradin, which I'm really looking forward to paint up in the High Fleet Typhon colour scheme. It's going to be a bit of a challenge as the model is absolutely massive and I'm not really sure even how I'm going to assemble it. But in the meantime, while I'm working that out, I've got a few other models that I'll be painting in the Typhon colour scheme. So I'll possibly save the Haradin for a special video if I'm able to reach 1,000 subscribers. So if you've not already subscribed to my channel, please make sure you do, so you don't miss out on the High Fleet Typhon Haradin video. But enough about that, and let's get into the Tyrannocyte. The model itself is absolutely awesome, I love it. However, to paint, it was an absolute pain in the ass. It's not that it was complex, it wasn't, it's a very simple model. It's really just a big bag of flesh with armour and tentacles. It's the fact that the entire model is the most ridiculously top-heavy model I've ever seen in my life. And the entire thing is supported by four spindly little legs. So trying to paint this model under a camera without it snapping and breaking every 30 seconds was not the easiest task. But I got there in the end. I firstly decided to keep all of the armour pieces and tentacles separate so that they could be painted up more easily before assembly. I then sprayed the entire model with Citadel White Scar Rattle Can, apart from the armour plates which I used Citadel Chaos Black Rattle Can. And my idea here was I was going to start building up all of the highlights on the armour first, before then assembling the model. And to do that, I'm going to use the usual Citadel The Fang. And I'm going to start off by airbrushing this on and trying to hit all of the raised surfaces and any of the kind of raised flat areas on the armour plates. Just trying to build up where I want the highlights with the airbrush and then we'll go in a little bit later with the dry brush to reinforce them. Next, I wanted to paint up all the tentacles on the model so that they were ready to be assembled along with the armour plates. And to do that, normally I would have used Citadel Contrast Space Wolves Grey, but for some reason I forgot and I used the Fang instead. But both of these colours are so similar that it's not going to make a huge bit of difference to the end result. So I just use the airbrush here to spray on the paint about 50% of the way down, creating a nice smooth transition between the fang and the white scar. And I did this to all of the tentacles for the model, including all of the tentacles that are on the bottom of the spore mines as well. And once you're done, you should be left with all of the parts of the model looking a little bit something like this. Thank you. 
Next up, we're going to be applying the second layer of highlights to all of the armor pieces. And to do that, I'm going to be airbrushing on Citadel Fenrisian Grey. And we're just following the same process as we did with the Fang. This time we're just covering slightly less of an area, leaving some of the Fang left behind. And this is going to give us a really nice bright highlight in all of the raised areas on the armour. I then went in with the same Fenrisian grey, this time with the dry brush, just to catch all of the edges on all of the armour parts. And just make sure it's quite a light dry brush and not too thick, so that you're only really catching the edges when you're doing a pass. The next part is always my favourite part, and this is when we start to bring some colour and life into the model. We're going to be painting up the big bag of flesh that is the model, and to do that we're going to be airbrushing on Citadel Contrast Paint Volupus Pink. And we just want to hit the entire fleshy area with this colour, including any of the tentacles at the bottom as well. And just be gentle with the airbrushing as we don't want to flood any of the areas. Just give it multiple light passes and build it up from there. And this is where a little bit of the trade-off of not assembling the model fully comes into play. As even though it's a little bit easier for me to handle the model and spray it from this angle as it's not been fully assembled, I am running the risk, however, of touching the paint with my hands and rubbing it off, which did eventually start to happen. But just do your best to try and make sure you let the paint dry if you have to handle any of the painted areas. And once you've got the model looking sufficiently pink, it's time to apply the highlights. And to do that, we're going to be airbrushing in a 50-50 mix of the same Volupus Pink mixed in with Cadian Flesh Tone. And again, we just want to be hitting all of the raised areas, and this is going to give it a really nice, gruesome, pinky flesh tone. And do keep in mind that when we do assemble the model, a lot of this will be covered by the armour plates. So just make sure you have a rough idea where the armour plates are going to go and spend a bit more time highlighting the areas that are going to be exposed. It was at this stage where I foolishly decided to assemble all of the parts of the model before painting in all of the pink claws. I should have definitely painted in the pink claws first before assembling the model, but unfortunately it is what it is. From here on out, tilting the model ran the risk of the entire thing snapping and every part exploding off it. And also, even touching the model caused it to vibrate uncontrollably. But that aside, the next step is to paint in all of the claws and horns on the model. And to do that, we're going to be using Volupus Pink again. 
and we're going to be putting the airbrush away for this step and just using the brush straight out of the cup. And just make sure you hit all of the horns and claws spread across the model. Next up is to highlight all of the claws and horns that we previously painted in pink. And we're going to be doing that using Vallejo Squid Pink. I decided to use the airbrush here as it produces a much nicer and smoother transition in comparison to what the dry brush can achieve. You just need to be careful that you don't get too much overspray onto any of the previously painted parts. And at some point during the previous step, the model did come unattached from its base and fall over and half of the tentacles fell off and so did half of the armour plates. I reattached the tentacles but decided to leave the armour plates off for now. And once we've highlighted all of the claws, it's then time to start adding some shade in. And we're first going to shade in all of the flesh areas and the pink horns that we just painted up. And we're going to do that by making up a mix of Citadel Shade Caraborg Crimson mixed in one to four with any glaze medium. And as I said, we're just going to apply one coat of this to all of the pink and flesh areas. And this is going to help add some shade into all of the recesses and help tie in some of the harsh highlights that we've got on the flesh itself. There were also a bunch of small little horns poking through each one of the armour plates. So I firstly gave them a quick coat of Vallejo Off-White. And once I'd hit them all, I then went in with some Citadel Contrast Volupis Pink. Next up, we're going to be shading in the rest of the model that hasn't already been shaded in the Caraborg Crimson shade. And those areas would be all of the armour plates, all of the tentacles, and any of the kind of white areas at the top, including the kind of arms and the kind of vent looking things as well. Pretty much everywhere except for the main fleshy area, and any of the claws. And I'm using the same ratio here, which is one part shade to four parts glaze medium. And as always, I'm using my scale 75 shadow black, but kind of any black wash would do the same thing here. And after that's dried, the model's ready to be based. And for this, I did my usual High Fleet Typhon egg spawn base. And to do this, all I did was firstly glue some stones to the base. Followed by the eggs. And I used some 6mm and 5mm ball bearings for this. And then I just filled in all the rest of the base with AK Rough Terrain. And for the spore mines, the bases were a little bit small to add the rocks. So I just added one of the eggs and filled in the rest with the Rough Terrain. For 
Then once that's dry, I'm then going to go in with my combination of PVA glue and super glue. And this is going to give that kind of nice kind of striation look to the eggs and make it look more realistic and less like a ball bearing that's been placed on the base. And all we really need to do here is apply some of the PVA glue around the base of all of the eggs and then switch to your brush on super glue and then apply that over the top of the PVA glue. And once the super glue makes contact with the PVA glue, it should dry almost instantly, leaving you with some really nice, interesting effects on the base. Sometimes if you apply too much PVA glue, it can take a little bit of time for the PVA to dry, but once it's done, you're ready to paint all of the base in black and then start to highlight it up. Normally I would have used a combination of dark grey, medium grey and light grey, but this time I decided that I was going to give the fang with Fenrisian grey and grey sear a try. And using these colours will help tie in the base with the rest of the model. So firstly, I'm going to do a heavy dry brush over the entire base using Citadel the Fang. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to get a good camera angle on this as turning the model on its side was increasing the chance of it falling apart again. But there was nothing special here, just a heavy dry brush of the Fang. And I'm then going to come in with a slightly lighter dry brush of Citadel Fenrisian Grey. And once that's done, I then go in with an even lighter dry brush of Citadel Stonewall Grey. And the last thing that's left to do is to paint up all of the eggs. And to do that, I just gave them a quick dry brush of Citadel Screamer Pink just making sure to cover all of the eggs and some of the area around the eggs as well. And then to highlight the eggs, we're just going to go in with a slightly lighter dry brush of Vallejo Squid Pink and just try and hit the tops of all of the eggs. And that's the model finished. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. I do have a couple of other High Fleet Typhon videos in the pipeline, some of which include a Gene Stealer Broodlord and a Winged Hive Tyrant. And once they are done, I'll most likely start the process of the cleanup and assembly and painting of the High Fleet Typhon Haridan. So make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any of my future content. But until next time, happy painting and I'll see you in the next one.